is always a pleasure to share what you like very much. And since storytelling is one thing I really enjoy for all ages, <coughs> I'm delighted to be here tonight to share this with you. But since this is a workshop, that means your participation. So at appropriate times, there'll be no, no one saying no. <laughs> <laughs> to begin, how many of you have had formal courses in storytelling? All right. How many have actually told stories? Now, preschool children, grade school children, junior high, senior high, young adult, seniors, special populations like the uh, mentally and uh, visually handicapped. I'm trying to get a range to see what's here. Those of you who had formal instruction in storytelling, and those of you who have done storytelling, let's say this is a review for you. There's more than one way of telling stories. There's one more. And to share stories, there are many alternative paths, ways you can do this. Tonight, what we're going to do is to go into some of the elementary aspects of storytelling. And then from there, we'll go into the more detailed manner of stories in storytelling. You have in your hand an outline I gave you. And if you'll notice in doing this, we have a chart called the Art of Storytelling and Reading Aloud, preparing for storytelling, some of the things we have to know as a storyteller, personal attributes, essentials for learning stories, effective storytelling qualities, and other maybe, uh, negative, uh, negative qualities to avoid, and negative quality to avoid in reading aloud. <coughs> The next is a schematic chart of a storyteller. How do you, how do I outline a story? How do we appeal to the ear? How do we appeal to the eye? And how do we appeal to the mind? You, we as a storyteller must positively respond to the story. See it, feel it, live it and cultivate with the characters and situations a rich empathic personality. What is our desire? As storytellers, know the story, know the method, the audience to lead the listener to what you would hope to be the desired response or reaction. Then, Carolyn Field, a friend of mine, who was in charge of the children's services at the Philadelphia Free Library, had the Ten Commandments of Storytellers. You can read those at your leisure. And finally, a few reference and bibliographical aids for the storyteller. These are just uh, a few. There are many, many more. And uh, you'll see, you'll find those listed. Storytelling and the oral or written narration of thoughts, experiences, events, along with meaning and personal understanding conveyed through such expression. When we begin to communicate, we're telling the story. Not a day goes past when you and I don't tell a story. There's somebody or somebody's telling the story to us. And according to the way you feel, it may be a joyous one, it may be one of anger, it may be one of disgust for a certain person, but you're telling a story. <clears throat> now the question is, why do you and I engage in storytelling? First and foremost, when we share stories with people, it is our hope that we will have an opportunity for them to be entertained. And we want them to enjoy what we're telling. 
Thus, we look for this to be one of the primary reasons for telling stories. And when we motivate, as a librarian, one of my purposes has been in telling stories is to lead the listener from the spoken word to whatever book I may have used for my stories. In other words, from one medium to another. And then, we want to educate. And when I say that, it's to inform and to present to our listeners perhaps materials of which they are not familiar. But as we learn to educate, it is with the idea of broadening their horizon, helping them to have new experiences, and meeting through stories, new companions, new situations, and then of course to inspire. Some of the stories that we tell have a very moral, spiritual value to them. So often when I use stories, for example, for the coming Christmas season, among the stories I have used, there has been one by Selma Lagerlof called <laughs> The Holy Night. Then, I've also used this beautiful story by Ruth Sawyer from her book, The Way the Storyteller, The Juggler of Notre Dame. For children, we can also use a very lovely story called The Music Box. And in addition to that, you'll find other inspirational stories. For Hanukkah, I have used A Cruise of Oil. We have also told stories in terms of inspiration for the Easter season. I've used what is Oscar Wilde's A Selfish Giant. The Beauty of the Lily is another one. And for Yom Kippur, I had, I've used a lovely story called The Most Precious Gift in the World. So you can use stories from many different ways. <laughs> and then to perpetuate a folk art. And in perpetuating your folk art, you are also passing on legacies and the heritage of many different cultures. This is most important because through storytelling, it's one way to build cultural understanding. And that is why we should try to use stories from many different cultures as much as possible. Whenever I have traveled throughout the world, whether I was in Australia or New Zealand, or Japan or Hong Kong, or England, or the Netherlands, or Cyprus, or South Africa, or Zimbabwe, and my last trip was Brazil, we try to gather stories from these different cultures and then add to them to your own repertoire and share them with other people. So often, you'll find common themes, common situations, and common characters in stories from different cultures. And this is most important. It shows the universality of humankind. So these are just a few of the many, many ways why we may use to tell stories.